The Ming Dynasty Outer Great Wall turns from Xikou and snakes its way to Pianguan, which we have already visited. Now we are going to travel north along this highway, leaving the Ming Dynasty Great Wall temporarily to visit the Jin Dynasty Great Wall, which lies on the vast grassland. In the 12th century, the New Jin people rose up, established the Jin Dynasty on the northern grasslands, and confronted the Song Dynasty. The Jin Great Wall was built after this. The Jin Great Wall is about 5,000 kilometers long, starting from Mulidawa in Inner Mongolia in the east and ending at Yinshan, a mountain range in North China. The Jin Great Wall was built in a special way. Trenches were dug and walls were built using the excavated soil. Castles were set up to house soldiers at strategic places along the Jin Great Wall. A combination of trenches, walls and castles. The Jin Great Wall has also been called the Boundary Trenches or the Boundary Castles. In the 12th century, the Mongolians were quickly in the northern desert and began to play an ever more important role on the stage of history. The Jin dynasty was deeply panicked and quickly responded. First, they tried to massacre the Mongolians, but they were themselves scattered. So finally, they withdrew and adopted a defensive posture. This policy was the origin of the Jin Great War. However, it did not stop the Mongolians from becoming more and more powerful. In the early 13th century, Tiemu Zhen, a prominent Mongolian chieftain, united all the Mongolian tribes after several dozen years of effort. In 1206, Timu Zhen was crowned emperor of all the Mongolian tribes and given the title of Genghis Khan. As a nomadic people, the Mongolians were good horsemen and archers. Depending on their military strength, Genghis Khan wrecked a series of dazzling military achievements. The Jin Great War stayed on the grasslands, watching the Mongolians over more than 700 years. Genghis Khan, the proud son of heaven. For hundreds of years, people used to believe the Jin Great War was built by Genghis Khan. They meant this as a compliment but it did not occur to them that Genghis Khan would not bother to build a wall to protect himself because he spent all his life moving around on horseback. However, this is a matter for historians. Let's turn now to the descendants of Genghis Khan. different spectacles. An open sky, a wild, expansive land. When the wind blows grasses apart, cows and sheep appear. This age-old folk song has given so many people a fascination for the grasslands. Lying at the 
foot of the Jin Great Wall, Nilin Guala is rich in water and grass. The Nilin Guala River twists along the Jin Great Wall. It has turned this old battlefield into fertile pasture land. July is the most beautiful month on the grassland. The colorful flowers make an appealing picture. This green circle of flowers is called a mushroom circle by the local people, because mushrooms grow in the center. Sheep are called elegant poems, and sometimes even pearls on the grassland. But these sheep are much bigger than pearls. Their tail alone weigh more than 10 kilograms each. Good horses are always the pride of the grassland. Wu Shu Muqing horses are the most famous. Legend has it that Wu Shu Muqing horses were one of the six types of horses preferred by Emperor Tai Zong of the Tang Dynasty. Even the least skilled rider never feels tired on the back of a Wu Shu Muqing horse because it gallops steadily and quickly. Romantic people love horses. Over history and in the struggle with nature, horses have been their primary means of transportation and a help they could not have done without. Mongolian troops came and left like thunderbolts over the grassland, depending for their power on their horses. This training requires skill. This movement prevents one from falling from the horse. Horses and sheep have been on the grassland for a very long time. But now today, as the living standards of the nomadic people have begun to improve, more than transportation has become more and more common. The most exciting event on the grassland is Nada Mu, which occurs once every year. 
Nadamu means entertainment in Mongolia. A traditional celebration, it has been popular on the grassland for as many as 700 years. At the most beautiful time of the year, the nomadic people put on gorgeous clothes and get together to celebrate Nadamu. and the headgear made of precious materials give an air of celebration. <laughs> Melodies flow from the Ma To Chin, a stringed instrument popular with Mongolians. They express a longing for a happy life. To portray the grassland, the Ma Tou Qing is much more powerful than paintings or poems. Wind, wrestlers spread their arms. Wrestling is Mongolian's favorite sport. Legend has it that Genghis Khan's younger brother, Bela Gutai, was the best wrestler in the grassland. Wrestlers are not divided into different white groups. Sometimes more than 500 wrestlers fight each other in one match. Wrestling champions are highly respected figures, and they are destined to have a place in Mongolian history. The Mongolians are known for their excellent bowmanship. In ancient times, arrows were the main weapons used in hunting and fighting. Today, archery has become a way to promote friendship. race is the high point of Nada Mu. Mongolians spend lots of time on horseback and are obsessed with horse races. Even these boys are ready to have a try. Since the Qing dynasty, horse races for children have won a lot of attention. Bright and brave young competitors race forward, bringing back memories of their ancestors.
people are competing everywhere, and everyone is cheering. Nada Mu is a demonstration of the brave and the bright spirit of the Mongolian people. They exchange skills and cheer each other up. Understand the Mongolian people, the proud sons of heaven along the Jing Great Wall. 